Welcome, 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 college and high school football fans. This is me, your boy Larry B. Bring it to you here live at ATV. Saturday morning, it is Saturday, October 8th, 2022. And boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you this morning or afternoon, depending on the way this is in the country. Oh, yes. Taryn Rodriguez. We'll be our back for another week. Oh, so many games getting underway as we speak. TCU and Kansas. Kansas is ranked. Really, like, that's just, something's crazy, right? We have some unranked fun as the Michigan School link up today. East Michigan and West Michigan. Let's not forget about the Red River rivalry going on down the Red River Showdown. If you love Texas and Oklahoma, unranked, but still crazy. Crazy for the going down in the Cotton Bowl. Also, with that today, got lots more. Number 11, God, number 18, CLA. My goodness, how about that tonight? Well, let's just say tonight's game, uh, Sharp Night Football is up to you. Whether you want to call it Clemson at Boston College or Washington at Boston College. See you, John. I'm going to make a little bit of 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 a little Oh yeah, we're talking for the uh, We had a game for the ages last night. My goodness, St. John Bosco and Mario Bosco. We're now becoming the more. We're going to be so much as possible to hear about you. Welcome to Three and Out Talk with Brad here on iSports Radio. Good work for all. That is sports. Welcome, 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 college football fans. Oh, and high school, too. Got to throw that in there. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show here today. I am joined by, of course, my boy, man, the guy I always say, great dude overall, IE Sports Radio Hall of Famer. The guy has a resume uh, a mile long with us here. IE Sports Radio Hall of Famer. The host of Set Point here on IE Sports Radio, the, our volleyball show, the host of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, covering all things in SoCal, all sports. He is, of course, one of the COOs of IA Sports Radio, and the guy just does everything, and we love him here. And he, of course, as I like to say, man, as always, above all, a great friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Taran Rodriguez. What's going on? How are you doing today, man? Hey, hey, Larry B. Great to be on here. I'm so happy to be on Hawkinson High School College Football with y'all let's get it let's get it in fact good sir so my goodness Taryn <laughs> we have ourselves some solid games today man I mean of course we can't forget about number eight Tennessee and number 25 LSU as well uh getting underway right now but there are so many great games it's kind of hard to just not jump into this week's slate of games and forget about last week a little bit but anyway Taryn how has your week been brother how have you been though before we get into anything man how how, how was your week I'm doing good, Larry. I can't complain. No, living the dream. Uh, yesterday, I uh, covered uh, some college volleyball. Great little matchup between Long Beach State and UC Santa Barbara. And, you know, I can't complain about uh, about today. Well, neither can I, good sir. I had a great week as well. And just enjoying riding the wave of life, as I always say, number one above all, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> Without him, nothing is possible. That's right. That is right. Of course, without all of you listeners, IE Sports Radio wouldn't be possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the IE Sports Rebuild is officially underway. And the IE Sports Radio Rebuild, that is, is officially underway. And we're just getting things going. Lots of new hosts. Lots of new things going on. And the same old IE Sports Radio that you knew back before my life just got busier than busy with school and work and the married life and everything. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's getting back to where it was. May I say today, coming up later on this afternoon, Tara might want to tune in for this one, Cecilia and I are actually back today for the Sports Cup Perspectives. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, she's back. She's ready to rock and roll. We're both back. We're ready to rock and roll on her birthday. So her birthday, of course, Cecilia, it's today, her birthday. Can we get a hand clap? Yes, right, my beautiful wife, Cecilia. Happy birthday, bitch. 
Uh, so not today, later on today, she's gonna get her hair done. You know, gotta get the hair done. And we're gonna have a nice little night out with uh, mother and the boy. We're gonna have a great time tomorrow at Downtown Disney. Um, but I gotta say that, uh, yeah, her and I are gonna have ourselves a good little show today. Lots of fun stuff. We'll be talking about Gridiron Gang, a movie that we've watched before. I know the movie that Taryn's probably seen numerous times. So just gotta say, uh, lots of good stuff coming your way here at IA Sports Radio. So yeah, um, should be some fun stuff. What do you think about that, Darren? Going to be a great time. And I'm happy that you two are back. And also happy birthday to Celia. And it's been a long time coming for y'all. I hope to catch the action on Sports Couple Perspective. But definitely keep an eye on the link on IE Sports Radio. Please. Or on the Twitter. Please do. No, you're correct, Aaron. Please do, because it's going to be a fun show, you guys. So, with that said, <laughs> good old Aaron. With that said, y'all, let's have ourselves some fun and uh, talk a little bit of football today. So, first things first, Aaron, my goodness, last week, can we just can we just address a few things, man? Um, San Diego State has gone down the drain. Boise State ate them for breakfast last week. I know you talked about that on yesterday's show, on, on um, SoCal Spring Sports Show. Amazing show, you guys. If you, I'm telling you, if you love Southern California sports, this guy covers everything. Can we get a hand clap for the Lake Elsinore Storm? I'm just saying champions this year. Ten covers the Lake Elsinore Storm. He covers the IU 66ers. He covers the Washington Under Six. This guy covers everything that is Southern California, guys. There's a minor league team. Okay, single A advanced team. So yeah, um, but can we also talk a little bit of UCLA knocking off number fifteen Washington last week? How about that? Victorious fight on USC got it done over Arizona State last week. Um, I mean, craziness. Oklahoma continues to fall apart as they would lose again. They've lost to TCU. That was incredible. Purdue knocking off number 21, Minnesota. I mean, Tarim, there were games last week that were crazy. Then there were some games that we just kind of knew would happen, like number two, Alabama knocking off number 20, Arkansas, 49-26. Regardless, though, that was a bigger fight than I thought it would have been. Uh, good game, though, overall. And just lots and lots of good football games. Shout out to Maryland, the Terps, for knocking off Michigan State, by the way, 27-13. to I know Mr. Mike Pat and the DMV is liking that very much so. Uh, Buffalo wins another game, Taryn. Uh, Patty's Buffalo Bulls win another game over Miami of Ohio. Hey, wins are wins, right, Taryn? Um, <laughs> Minnesota State knocks out number 17, Texas A&M. I mean, there's lots of great schools. Uh, lots of great, lots of great games. The Tiger Bowl, LSU and Auburn was a good one. My goodness, twenty-one to seventeen, LSU knocks off Auburn. Just lots of great football games last week. And can we just end it off with two really good games here? Where Georgia Tech, hey, they'll actually knock off number twenty-four Pitt. I think number twenty-four Pitt wants their quarterback back from the Steelers, Mister Pickett. Just kidding. Um, twenty-six to twenty-one, the uh, the Yellow Jackets win this one, and of course. Last but not least, over here in our neck of the woods, it was a Pac-12 after dark. I don't know if you called this game or not, Taryn. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I do know this was a dang good one uh, for a little bit. But number 13, Oregon, will get smashed Stanford 45-27 at home in Austin Stadium. So, Taryn, any uh, thoughts on any of those crazy games or any other games you want to bring up from last week? Well, <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I'm just going to say I have a lot of crony when it comes to UCLA. I didn't think they would beat Washington. <laughs> I mean, my heart said UCLA was going to win, but my mind said Washington was going to win just based off of like the strength of schedule and how, you know, Washington's been battle tested. Believe it or not, UCLA became the first team to sack Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback from Washington. It took, what was it, four games, five games for it to happen, but Penix finally got figured out by the UCLA defense. And I really thought that UCLA is now starting to prove themselves. At first, we all didn't think they deserved to be ranked. That's because they struggled in – well, they struggled against South Alabama. And then the other opponents, they were very meh. Like, those opponents aren't, like, anything to ride home about. But UCLA is deserving to be ranked. Now, their biggest test is playing Utah. And they have not fared well against Utah – at the same time, Utah is having to travel from Salt Lake City to the Rose Bowl, so this should be quite the interesting matchup. Other than that, 
I think that's pretty much it. I just have lots of crow to eat. I ate my crow when it came to UCLA, and I picked Utah to win today. But again, I would not be surprised if UCLA won. Maybe I'm just, I'm, a, I'm a reverse jinxer or something. But I'm also going to say that San Diego State's offense is so inept. It's so bad. It's just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And their defense has to, like, bail them out every single week. And this week they weren't able to. They actually performed well in the first half, but then they forgot that there was a second half. And they gave up 35 unanswered points. It was disgusting. So, uh, poor San Diego State, except not really. Anyway, back to you, Larry. Insert face Paul emoji here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. San Diego State bothers me. <laughs> just, you know, you have a team that was pretty damn good a couple of years ago, Darren. I mean, you know, the, the, you go back to the days of Rocky Long. You know, I mean, the, I'm just saying this, Darren, the Aztecs, like, make me want to, like, beat my head against the wall. I mean... <laughs> What are you doing, Brady Hoke? Like, what the heck? And Brady was there like 10 years ago. I mean, come on, Brady. Like, yeah, but I don't know, man. It's it's just one of those deals. But I can tell you right now, Taryn, it's, uh, you know what? We're all right. I mean, down here in SoCal, we're doing our best. We're loving our teams. And, uh, well, we'll see how those... Uh, how those Aztecs fare coming up. But anyway, it's Aaron. My goodness, man. We got some good ones here today. Uh, really excited getting off. I know I, I mentioned some of those games already today, man. So who are you keeping an eye on? I know mean, we already have some games that are 30 minutes in. Who are you keeping an eye on today? Well, I hate to be biased toward the West Coast, but I'm actually keeping an eye on USC Washington State just because I think Washington State is underrated. They have a solid defense. Their only loss was to Oregon, which they actually led – majority of that of that game and then Oregon just surged back they made Bo Nix look like Justin Herbert out there or Marcus Mariota in his prime before his injuries but I think Washington State's defense is pretty elite if you ask me I think it can give USC fits if they're not careful but um I think USC should be able to come out on top so it's kind of crucial just because this is 100% trap game just because next week they have, they're at Utah. So this could possibly be a trap game due to the fact that Washington state isn't bad. Remember they also beat Wisconsin. So we'll have to see what happens with the Cougars and the Trojans. Like that is crucial right there just because USC cannot afford to look ahead to next week. Same can be said for Utah. Utah could be facing a trap game as well as they play UCLA. So I really think that if it comes down to it, it could be between UCLA and USC or it could be between Utah and USC for the Pac-12 South title or however they formatted it. I feel the Pac-12 got rid of the whole South and North thing and they just put one whole big Pac-12 conference and the top two teams advanced to the conference championship. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to that, Taryn. That's actually pretty legit. Good idea there, sir. But, yeah, Taryn, so I, I'm going to keep my eyes locked on that one. I, I'm really focused right now, and, and call me a nut. I mean, I, I think it's kind of funny because these two teams weren't even talked about at the start of the season, I think. But I'm locked in right now on number 17, TCU, and number 19, Kansas. Who would ever have thought Kansas? I mean, Kansas, what, had one good year in 2007 in the last two decades, I think? I mean, seriously? And now they're actually, once again, some people forget that they're not a, just a basketball school. You know, they have a football team, too. Uh, and, and TCU, man. Tall stuff, knocking off Oklahoma last week. They're looking good. The Horned Frogs, I'm loving it, man. So currently, Tennessee leads. Yeah, there you go, Ter. Uh, Tennessee leads. <laughs> Terrence having a good time on Zoom over here. <laughs> <laughs> throwing up the hook of horns over here. Or no, he's throwing up the horned toads, I think. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> yeah, toads, there you go. So good stuff there. Then we got, of course, uh, Texas currently leading the Red River Showdown. 7-0, to zero, my goodness. Uh, so good stuff going on already. Buffalo is actually leading 17-0 to zero over Bowling Green. Can the 0-3 starting Buffalo Bulls actually go uh, or go you know 3-0 after going 0-3? I know Patty's going to be happy about that one. So lots of great games going on so far. But Taryn, we got to go ahead and get on in to a little bit of high school football, man. Oh, uh, Larry, before uh, we jump on into the high school football scene, there's actually only one un winless team 
in the NCAA FBS, and that would be Colorado. Last night, Colorado State beat what's what's their face? Uh, Nevada after Nevada committed a running into the kicker penalty or roughing the kicker penalty, and eventually ne- that allowed Col- Colorado State to kick the uh, game winning field goal or re kick the game winning field goal. Now, and now there's only one. On one winless team, and that's Colorado. And it's been a rough week for Colorado football as the Broncos put up a stinker, and Colorado State just barely got past Nevada. And then heaven knows what's going to happen with Colorado today. Anyway, now to high school football. Sorry about that. No, that's that good stuff there, Taryn. Um, that sucks. Poor Buffalo. Poor, poor Run Ralphie. Run, man. I, I feel so bad for that poor little <laughs> Buffalo. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. It's, the team sucks, not him. We love you, Ralphie. We love Ralphie the Buffalo. So, um, Darren. Also, last night, can't forget, man. We had some Mountain West action too, as UNLV got eaten like a bowl of cereal, um, <laughs> by the Spartans of San Jose State. My goodness, forty to seven. I mean, my gosh. I mean. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, guess what I thought UNLV was going to be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. The Spartans said <laughs> not in our term. So um, good stuff there. But um, yeah, no, no. They did. They, they can be Mutombo them. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> Darren, you got to love that commercial, man. Like, he, he straight up smacks that kid's cereal. Like, <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty <laughs> funny stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, okay, let's let's. I, I'm just having too much fun here. It's all hey, me too. We're having fun, but it's all it's all good, y'all. See, now that Taryn and I are doing it more professional, we're doing it over Zoom and everything. We're over here messing around. <laughs> hey, I think it's gonna even add to the show. So, high school football is here, y'all. We're we're in full effect. Some of the country is in week six. Some of the country is in week seven. Some of I don't know. We have that crazy week zero that pops in. I mean. We got a lot of stuff to get to, but really fast, y'all. Let's go ahead. Today, we're going to do something called the high school, the IE Sports Radio High School Football Spotlight. It's a really long name, but it's really awesome because we're going to start shouting out, of course, the teams who are not the top 10. So, right now, we currently have North Shore from Houston, Chandler, Bishop Gorman out of Las Vegas, Buford, Chaminade Madonna out of Hollywood, Florida, St. Thomas, Aquinas out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Central out of Miami. St. Francis Academy out of Baltimore, Maryland. Modern Day out of Santa Ana, who should be number one now. And St. John Bosco out of Bellflower. Both teams in California, I guess miles apart from one another, number one and two, or numbers one and two. But we only really talk about them, but every week, you know, we slightly bring in our, our old high schools just for the heck of it. Or, t- you know, the games that Taryn will cover and follow and everything. But we decided, you know what, let's have some fun. Last week we talked about it on the show. And we're like, let's have some fun and talk about the high schools of you guys out there. Your guys' high schools. The schools that you guys either played for or grew up cheering for, you know, in high school that is. and, and Or your colleges that you went to. And let's go ahead and talk about them too. Let's, you know, we won't spend a super long segment, but we'll shout them out and give a little bit of um, thoughts and opinions and whatever. So yeah. So Taryn, we're going to run through this list really quick. And then after we do that, we're going to get to the high school, uh, the IE Sports Radio High School Football Spotlight. So really quick, man, uh, courtesy of MaxPreps.com. North Shore out of Houston, Texas, just does it again. They'll defeat Summer Creek 34-27. to Good football game, though. I'll tell you, man, that was a very good game. Um, actually, Summer Creek had 14 points in the fourth quarter. Close one there uh, for North Shore, but they will remain undefeated now. 6-0 and North Shore Mustangs out of Houston, Texas. <clears throat> Chandler will now jump to 5-0 and as they... Uh, actually, well, they're five and zero now, and they have today. They're taking the Castile. They're taking on the Castile Colts, who was also five and zero. Uh, wow, that should be a good, uh, good football game there. The Castile Colts are out of Queen Creek, Arizona. So let's see, can Castile be giant killers and beat a top ten school, or will Chandler? Um, let's see here, Chandler, the Chandler Wolves. 
uh, out of Chandler, Arizona. And of course, will they remain undefeated? Um, we shall see. Bishop Gorman, the only loss this season. They're the only team in high school football who has lost a game. Well, the only top 10 team who's lost a game. But it's to modern day. So I guess that's excusable, right, Taryn? Um, <laughs> so um, we have here... Uh, let's take a look. See here. They yesterday they defeated Legacy. <clears throat> My goodness, Bishop Gorman defeated Legacy, sixty nine to zero. That that sucks for them, but good for Bishop Gorman, I guess. So yeah, they will go to six and one. Number eight, Buford. Number seven, Buford out of Buford, Georgia. Uh, let's see. They'll play on Thursday. They did, they actually yeah. I don't know what happened here. I don't know where the score was. There is no score for some reason, but apparently uh, Georgia won, or apparently Buford, the Buford Wolves won, so sweet. Um, nothing. I'm getting nothing here from uh, Max Preps, which is kind of crazy, but I'll just, like I said, I'll take it here that they won the game. Um, next up here, we have Chaminade, number six, Chaminade Madonna out of Hollywood, Florida, the Lions. They will defeat, or actually no, they have a bye week. They are going to be playing coming up next week versus SAC, I believe, or uh, I don't want to butcher them, but it's, oh, Somerset Academy Key Lions from Deerfield Beach, Florida, so that's coming up next week. Next up here, we're jumping into the top five, as St. Thomas Aquinas out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, will dominate, well, not dominate, but beat Dillard 24-6. to on the road last night or this week, so good for them. Next up, we have Central out of Miami. They jumped to six and zero as they defeat Northwestern forty two to seven yesterday. Saint Francis Academy out of Baltimore, Maryland. I see Mike Pat in the chat room here saying, "Did I miss my school?" <laughs> well, not yet. No, 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 no. But somebody who is in your neck of the woods, Mike. Of course, St. Francis Academy, they will jump now. Actually, my gosh, they don't have a game for a while. <clears throat> for a full month, actually. That's pretty crazy. Uh, they will have been 5-0. and They did their thing. Uh, and look at that. They don't have a game for a month. Wow. So they'll take their next game is the 28th of October. So it's not a month, but a couple of weeks. Versus Arundel. And they are out of Gambrills. I want to say I don't want to butcher that name, but Gambrills, Maryland. They're currently five and one, so that should be a pretty good football game there. Next up, Taryn. This was it. Number one versus number two. Last night, the modern day monarchs, the number one team in the nation last year, national champions yet again. Well, Taryn, they have themselves a good little football game with number one, St. John Bosco, who is just right down the road in Bellflower. Guys, Santa Ana and Bellflower are so close. They're like, I want to say what, not even 20 miles apart, Taryn, that maybe, maybe 20 miles, maybe 30, 35, 40. I don't know how many miles they are. <clears throat> Taren, that's Taryn's deck of the woods. Taryn's the Orange County guy. I'm the IE Inland Empire guy out here. And I know Bellflower is in L.A., but it's borderline L.A., Orange County. Um, and, yeah. So, Taryn, last night, man, modern day, did the dang thing. 17-7. to They will knock off the number, school, the number one school in the land, St. John Bosco. And, well, guess what? You don't, if you don't know how big these schools are, let's just say Bryce Young, the guy playing for Alabama, he's a product of modern day. And the guy playing for Clemson right now, DJ Uyunglele, or Uyung, yeah, Uyunglele, is the quarterback for Clemson right now. So I'm just saying he came from St. John Bosco. So those two guys, I think at one point, did face off against each other in high school. Regardless, though, yeah, Taryn's giving me the confirmation. Taryn, take it away, good sir. It was a great game last night. Modern day got the better of St. John Bosco. Yeah, it was a defensive most scoring game. I was very astounded by both teams' defenses. They were just lights out. And I guess that's the old saying, defense really win, does win championships. Offense fills the seats, defense wins championships. And for modern day, this was a huge step forward going into the rest of league play because they already got their bad – well, their tough game out of the way when they narrowly escaped against Jay Sarah. I really think their only tough – okay, I wouldn't say their only tough competition is just Orange Lutheran, but Santa Margarita is also up there. But this is so big for modern day. Everyone was giving them their doubts. I will say this about that St. John Bosco. Their quarterback did go out with the concussion 
he was out by halftime and then Bosco had to like readjust after that. But overall, I thought Modern Day played really well. And I really don't think this will be the last time we see these two face off against one another this year. I would not be surprised these two facing off against one another come playoff time. Just because, obviously, it's these two. Like, last year was the exception with Servite just rising to power. And then, I know we still have the Centennials, the Long Beach Polys, the Mission Viejos. But I just really think that these two teams are amongst the elite and there were rumors saying that well it was gonna be played at so far but then modern day kind of turned it down and they decided to have a full house at a santa Ana college which i understand it's just totally understandable but uh on monday most of the tickets sold out if not they all sold out and then faculty members had to give up their tickets to have more tickets be on sale and it was just a barn burner. And the fact that it was a defensive battle really speaks to high bombs that these two teams aren't just all about offense. They're about defense as well. Agreed, Taryn. Agreed. And, man, um, I mean, just what a good game it was. And like I said, anytime you get number one versus number two, I mean, it's, it's a good game, right? So, I mean, great stuff last week. Oh, I'm sorry, last night. And, well, you're right. I think they will meet again. Really good stuff. Solid stuff there. Taryn, I think it's about time for that high school, the IE Sports Radio high school football spotlight. And, well, why don't we start things off in your neck of the woods, man. By the way, Taryn, a uh, graduate of Newport Harbor High School out in Newport Beach. And, well, Taryn... Those, uh, and I always, let me take a look here. I always forget that your guys' freaking mascot. The Sailors. Hey, the Sailors. So, yeah, looks like you guys would take a thump yesterday from the mighty Edison. Edison uh, currently 7-0, and oh, and you guys were kind of a speed bump. Kind of sucks. 47-14, um, to 14, ouch, at home, too. Edison kind of just did their thing. Um, <laughs> but the Edison, and if I'm not mistaken, the Chargers, right, Taryn? The Edison Chargers? Oh, no, yeah. What, how ironic, Taryn, Charger fan. I'm just kidding. But with that said, Taryn, uh, talk a little bit about your game last night and open up the high school spotlight for tonight, of course, Taryn's High School, Newport Harbor. Yeah, obviously it was going to be a tough one. Edison has gotten the better of Newport Harbor in a lot of seasons. I want to say the last time they want Newport Harbor beat Essen was in the seventies, but uh, yeah, I, Newport was eventually going to have to face Essen sooner rather than later. And sa- the same thing went with Los Alamitos. They, all they could do was just try their best and they were banged up a little bit. They got a few guys back, but Edison was just played bully ball with them. Like those guys on the O line, they're no joke. The defense really came alive in the second half. The first half, it was impressive, but unfortunately, again, the second half was just a whole different story. So for Newport Harbor, thankfully they don't have to face any more of those tough teams, oh, those top teams like that anymore until they get to like two more weeks when they play their rival Corona Del Mar. But they, all they just, I don't think they need to panic. All they just need to do is probably get healthy, at least win next week, because if that's the case, then they will be, at least a 500 team going into a possible postseason berth. And then they'll take it from there. I think they're just fine. I said this on Twitter and I'll, they are totally fine when it comes to possibly making the playoffs. They just have to win next week and they go from there. Well, Taryn, I'll tell you right now, best of luck to the sailors moving forward, man. They got this and, my Paris Panthers last night, hey, what a game. You know what? Uh, they, they're in league now. They went 5-0 and out of league. Good stuff. Par- like I said last week, I think Paris has done that like in over 20 years. Um, I know when I played there, we didn't go 5-0 and to start the season off. And, and man, what a, what a great job. Coach Martin's doing a great job over there with these guys. But, man, uh, just, oh, man. Last week, Takowitz out of Hemet got destroyed. For uh, 55 to 14. And la- yesterday, Taryn, I remember West Valley. We used to play West Valley. Talkowitz is kind of a new school. West Valley is old school out of Hemet. Um, we used to battle those guys uh, kind of crazy, Taryn. I remember even playing a JV game against these guys. 
Um, this is how close the games were. Taryn, we had a field goal. We had a double doinker go in, for, and they beat us by a point back when I was in JV. I mean, you can see, Taryn, how, how, the, how close these games were versus the school, the West Valley Mustangs. And uh, last night, it was another good one. Final score, though, 21-12. to Paris now drops two straight at 5-2 and two on the season. West Valley jumps to 6-1, and one, not too bad. Uh, and Paris will head to play, actually, it's a home game, versus Citrus Hill, another school on the other, other side of Paris, bordering Riverside. And uh, right now, Citrus Hill having a kind of a tough year as well. They're 0-7 right now. So we'll see if Paris can capitalize and make, get a good victory there in the Mountain Pass. Uh, we shall see, but hey, never count on anybody. I think we know that, right, Darren? I don't care what. I think, in my opinion, the the, the teams who haven't won a game all year are the scariest because they're like desperate. So I mean, I'm just saying, I totally understand that. So uh, should be a good game next week versus Paris and Citrus Hill. So uh, with that said, Darren, let's jump on over now to Mr. Adam Carnick's high school, Lakeshore, out of Stevensville, Michigan. He says here, uh, pretty cool. We got involve our colleagues here today. Uh, he says here that uh, they're having a rough year. The Lancers are three and four after a seven and four season last year. Uh, just lost to their arch rival St. Joe, forty two to fourteen last night. And my goodness, Taryn, yeah, they, it was a tough one, man. Looks like, uh, oh my, 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 at the half it was twenty eight to twenty eight to seven. Uh, St. Joseph, man, just. Took them to the woodshed. It was a tough go. It looked like a little bit like uh, Paris couple last week versus uh, versus uh, Tokowitz. But man, total total tough game. There. Saint Joseph, though, man, they're they're a solid school, Taryn. This is uh, they're six and one right now. <laughs> I don't know if you got up their stats, dude, but they're they look pretty good. Uh, this this high school is not. They're they're definitely not the. Uh, not the team across the street. That's you know the, <laughs> the, the 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 JV team on varsity. They're a pretty good team, man. They're five and zero right now in league. They're first first overall in league, looking pretty good. Any thoughts on this game here, Taryn, or or on Lakeshore or on St. Joseph? I could imagine that it lived up to the hype. I'm pretty sure, like when it comes to rivalry games, all bets are off. Like I don't think that any rivalry game should be overlooked. And that's what I like about high school and or college. You got to love those rivalry games. It's just fun because I think at the end of the day, unless you're like bitter, very bitter rivals, you're basically like, you're basically all friends. You all grow, grew up with one another. You know what I mean? Yeah. Taryn, those are the best, man. When you can, when you can, <laughs> when you can say that, like, yeah, that's right. We had a rivalry and it's crazy. Um, I remember uh, Paloma Valley. It's kind of funny because your guest a couple weeks ago or last week uh, that you talked to, that's the coach at Chafee now, um, or the volleyball team, she played for Paloma. And it's kind of funny because I was at school I was, while I was at work uh, at lunch, and I was hearing she said Paloma. I was like, what the heck? Like, that was our rival, Paris's rival back in the day. And it's just funny because I remember the guys that played at Paloma – you know, we couldn't stand each other in high school, man. When we played football, we saw each other on track and field. I didn't wrestle, but some of the guys who wrestled, it was just a rivalry because we've seen the same guys over and over and over and over. But the funniest thing is when I got to RCC, how funny was it, Taryn, that when I got to RCC, we were teammates. And it was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, you got to love that, right? So um, rivalries are fun. But, uh, yeah, good stuff there, man. But moving forward to – I don't want to butcher the name, but Fontaine Blue, I believe. The Fontaine Blue Bulldogs out of Mandeville, Louisiana. This is the the uh, alma mater of our Arthur Parsons here of IA Sports Radio, hosting the Bayou Bulletin. And he says here that they're currently 1-5, but they play their arch rivals, the Mandeville Skippers, coming up. And, well, Taryn, taking a look at them right now, Fontaineville. Two and four uh, right now in the season. They're zero and four in their district. Uh, yeah, the uh, man. That's kind of a tough one. They dropped a big one last night, thirty-five to ten to North Shore, who is currently uh, four and three. But yeah, look at that. They got their rivals coming up next week. It looks like the Skippers are one and five. So, Taryn, this could actually be a good football game coming up next week. We have the Mandeville Skippers versus the uh, Fontainebleau Bulldogs. Uh, what do you think about this one? Sorry about that. Uh, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, that should also be a great matchup as well. I... For me, I think high school football, in my opinion, 
anything is possible. I mean, it really is. It's not like, I mean, it's kind of like the NFL, but I feel high school football is basically anything can happen at this point, especially if you're like not doing well. And you said it best. Some of the most dangerous teams out there are those that don't have much to play for. And I really think that that statement holds true for any school. Agreed, Taryn. So we're going to move on forward to Mr. Mike Pat, who's in the chat room right now. Mike Pat, the host of Let's One About Sports here on IA Sports Radio, covering all DMV sports for us. He says here, Bowie High School, his high school in Bowie, Maryland, is 4-1 and one with a game against Robo Roosevelt High School today. Oh, boy. Currently, they're third in their region, the Bowie Bulldogs. And what is it about the Bulldogs? They love their Bulldogs because Bowie State is the Bulldogs, too. <laughs> That's funny. But anyway, um, we have here some good stuff, man. It looks like Bowie, they defeated last week Parkdale High School. Parkdale, oh, 14 to 0, by the way. Parkdale currently 2 and 3 out of Riverdale, Maryland. And yeah, man, Bowie is looking pretty darn strong, actually. I mean, 4 and 1 on the season today. There it is. The school, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt Raiders today. Go Raiders, Mike. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, good stuff here. This, this is going on today at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific, looks like. Um, 5 p.m. Eastern today. So let's take a look, man. Looks like a pretty solid team here. Uh, and let's see here if those Bowie Bulldogs can pull off today's victory. Also, Ter- uh, uh, Taryn, Adam wants to add in his high school. I'm sorry, his colleague says Concordia University, out of Chicago, of course, or Ch- Concordia University, Chicago, that is. Sorry, out of River Forest, Illinois. Off to a rough start. 0-4, today is homecoming. The Cougars are hosting Rockford College. Kickoff is at 2.15 Central Time, so that's coming up in a little bit. Um, also, yeah. Daryl wants to add in that Bowie State is not falling apart after I made that after I made that <laughs> comment in the chat room earlier. He says uh, they're, 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 uh, they're basically reloading, kind of a rough year. Also, Andrew says that to Andrew Hagenball, Another one of our colleagues here at I Sports Radio hosting our soccer show and our um, our Ohio show. And by the way, Daryl hosting our auto sports show. Uh, he says here, Adam, or sorry, uh, Andrew says, my alma mater sucks. <laughs> sucks too. If you want, you can shout them out. I think it's Elliot High School, I believe it on book sure, but out of Akron, Ohio. Uh, so pats off to them. Hopefully their season turns around. Uh, Adam also wants to add Concordia and Rockford are, oh, are one and four overall and zero oh and three in conference. So hopefully the Cougars get the win today. And last but not least today, Taryn, Miss Angela Winstead wants to add in here. She says, "My high school alma mater beat our Crosstown rivals last night on homecoming. We now we are now seven and one. Hey, she says when I was there." We were a four-peat state champs. Wow. Side note, my entire family went to the same high school. Good old J.H. Rose High School, also known uh, what you, also known as, but we don't claim Greenville, Greenville Rose <laughs> with her eyes rolling. She says, our crosstown rivals, D.H. Uh, Conley, also known as D.H. Country, is the alma mater of ECU's quarterback and star receiver, Hilton Allers. And C.J. Johnson, my old preacher's son, is the head coach. That's awesome. He says, Holton, not Hilton. <laughs> Stupid autocorrect. So, hey, awesome stuff there. How about that for our first high school, I Sports Radio high school uh, football spotlight, Terry? How about that? Let's give them applause, man. That was pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah, great stuff. I really did not know about some of these high schools. And you get to learn a lot about some of these high schools from all over the world, not just from the Californias or from the Texases or the Floridas. Yeah, but uh, I did not know about some of these uh, facts about uh, C.J. Johnson and whatnot. I really think that's incredible. Right, Terrence? Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. Right, Terrence? No, absolutely. I think that's pretty cool. And hats off to all these schools. Best luck to them moving forward this year. Our high schools and, and, and you know, involved in all that good stuff. So, Terrence, we're going to take ourselves a short break. And when we get back, well, we got lots more to get into, man. We got to uh, take a look at some of the colleges. We got D3 coming your way, D2. We got so much to get into, of course, heading into the D1 today. We already got into some D1. We'll talk some more about that coming up right now. But it's a fun stu- It's a fun show, as always, and we're always ready to rock and roll. So, Mr. Taron Rodriguez and myself, take ourselves a short break. When we get back, 
we are going to be jumping on in to a little bit of, well, going back to single A and then jumping into some junior college football. You're listening to Three and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Sports fans, do you like teams that are tough, cities that are tougher, and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Chi Town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing. And we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, Natalia's Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy, crispy white tea. <laughs> We are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all, and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, everyone. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. I'm welcoming you to Take Another Lap with the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. Yes, this is the Extra Mile with me and my co-hosts, Christopher Lehman and Michael Ward. We talk everything racing from NASCAR to IndyCar to Formula One to limited hydroplanes, endurance racing, the NHRA, and more. So come join us for an hour of great racing talk and a lot of fun as well on the Extra Mile Thursdays at 8 p.m. only on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Welcome back. Turn Lock is having a party. I mean, this is a high, this is a college and high school football party because that's what we do, y'all. Definitely enjoying it, loving every moment of it. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in today. It's been a fun one so far, and well, we got plenty more to go. By the way, uh, thank you to everybody who made our IE Sports Radio High School Football Spotlight a success. <laughs> one more home drop to all of you. It's the IE Sports Radio team, <laughs> and also to be. Uh, Pierre Moss wants to add one more. Okay, I don't know if you saw it in the chat room, man, on our, on our band app, but can we forget about Irvington High School? This is a, a place that, yeah, one of the best teams in New Jersey. Pierre Moss has been covering Irvington High School for years. So he's been, I remember him on Mixler covering games live. Uh, and he says Irvington High School out of New Jersey is 4-2 and two right now. They're playing at home versus Montclair. So hats off. So I believe they're the Spartans, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but Irvington High School, <clears throat> hats off to them. And all the best for them today. Uh, well, well, hopefully. But yeah, when they play. I think, I think they play today. So with that said, Taryn... How about that, man? Good start to the show here today. I know we're like almost an hour in, but let's take a quick run through some of these scores here today, Taryn. We got, uh, my goodness, right now, let's take a look at where we are, because I don't know, I don't know, Taryn, I don't know if it's, if it's just me, but the ESPN Score Center app, for some reason, has just been giving me fits the last couple of days, kind of annoying, so hopefully we can fix this issue, <laughs> uh, so... Our apologies for not jumping right back into single A like we wanted to, but we do have something else, <clears throat> and uh, well, that is the junior college in our neck of the woods and in California, of course, the triple C double A, the three C two A, and Taryn, boy, oh boy, there's all kinds of goodies going on here in the three C two A, dude. Last week was a uh, delicious slate of football we had. Unfortunately for your Orange Coast Pirates, they would head all the way over here, right down the street. Like I said, we're two exits away, three exits away. We're off of Newport over there, the Mount San Jacinto Eagles. Unfortunately, not a point to be scored by the Pirates. Um, <laughs> the Eagles will go 31-0 winning that one at home, man. Orange Coast drops to 1-4. The Eagles jump to 4-1. and one. Uh, next up here, some of the games that we highlighted last year. My gosh, <laughs> Butte versus San Mateo, and boy, was that a Butte. Uh, very good game. San Mateo up there, 28-21. Uh, to 21. We have here San Mateo leading this game. Very, very good game. And, uh, well, I loved it. Uh, San Mateo led a lot of it, but 28-21. Uh, to 21. 
Next up, Modesto <clears throat> and American River went head to head. American River defeating Modesto 29 to 28. A very close call there. Very, very close game. And then, of course, my beloved Riverside College Tigers would meet the Cogs of the Canyons Cougars. And my gosh, that was a good football game. Uh, I was a little worried. 31 to 28. Riverside pulls it off. Now 5 and 0 on the season. Canyons drops to 2 and 3. But man, that was a good football game. Uh, San Antonio, Mount San Antonio will hand Allen Hancock a loss, 48-7 to there, a very big victory for them. Golden West just takes it to Long Beach, man, 41-17 to to on the road. I mean, Palomar and San Diego Mesa went at it. Palomar wins this thing 18-17. to Lots of great football, man. Fullerton defeats El Camino, 30-23. to uh, Bakersfield stomped all over San Bernardino Valley, 69-20. to San Bernardino now drops to 0-5. Bakersfield jumps to 2-3. and Taryn, great, great matchups everywhere. Chafee defeats Southwestern, 42-27. to Gets lots of great stuff there. And by the way, in that game, uh, Chafee, well, I don't know how their records, but Taryn, lots of great stuff from last week, man. What you got, what you got to talk about in the Triple C AA? Yeah, I was quite impressed that Golden West was able to get the win over Long Beach, especially at Veterans Team. That's a tough place to win at. And if you're a journalist, getting up to the press box is quite the uh, flight of stairs. <laughs> but for this week, I didn't see too many games. I think most teams are on their bye this week, if I'm not mistaken. And then next week, I think, kicks off conference play for everybody, just be- that from what I saw. I did see one good scheduled rescheduled game. I think it was El Camino versus Santa Monica, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, overall, I think we had some great games last week outside of Orange Coast College. But anyway, it's about to get real when it comes to conference play, just because all these teams are trying to vie for being bowl eligible. And even the worst of teams can uh, possibly become bowl eligible just because the whole balance of conf- of conference equity uh, has, was taken into effect last season and you got to take that into consideration as well it's not going to be like a heavy favorite team beating up on a pipsqueak team it's going to be everything fairly balanced for the most part agreed there and so <clears throat> really good stuff there um but super excited uh for what's coming up this week man there's a lot of slate well, there's a big slate of games coming on up, and, well, it all starts off today, man. We got, uh, well, of course, it all starts off today, but we got some good ones here. Santa Monica and El Camino. Looks like that game is rescheduled from the September 3rd postponement. And, okay, well, actually, this looks like the week of bye weeks <laughs> because, yeah, I thought there were some good games coming up, but, man, it looks like nobody's playing this week. Uh, man, I mean, really, it's just San Jose versus Yuba, Gavlin versus Hartnell. Santa Monica versus El Camino, West Kalinga versus Monterey Peninsula, uh, Redwoods versus Los Mindanos, and Merced versus Cabello. So, yeah, overall, really not much. I think there's a lot of bye weeks happening, which is, hey, we all we all need the rest, right? So, good stuff there, and certainly excited for um, for some of the games coming up next week. I know we got the NJC going on. The NJCAA coming up next year, Taryn. But uh, any thoughts or comments on today's games? Uh oh, where's Taryn at? <laughs> Sorry. We Sorry. Lost Taryn. Out. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You're good. We're, we're still uh, for the 3C2A? Uh oh. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. We're good. Yeah, yeah. So any thoughts on today's games, man? Well, I'm glad we get some sort of 3C2A and not just everyone taking the whole week off just because. We need our 3C2A, and 3C2A football is football in general. So I think just because it's in California just doesn't mean that it's irrelevant. And junior colleges, as you you know, are a benefit to all college athletes. Agreed, Taryn. Agreed. So we're going to go ahead and jump right back into some single A action and kind of talk about the games currently going on at the moment. So, yeah, man, we got some uh, good stuff jumping on up here. Let's go ahead and uh, head on over to this. And, yeah, Terry, you might as well – you mind uh, jump, g- going around some of the games going on at the moment? Uh, 
Uh-oh, we lost Aaron again. Uh-oh, well, <laughs> good old Zoom. So let's take a look and see what we got going Okay, on. sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm alive. Don't oh. worry. I'm, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> you are good, man. So, okay. I, I, um, it's so, been yeah, a while since I've used Zoom. <laughs> you're good, Aaron. It's chaos happening. It's okay. Yes, yeah. So you so, mind taking us around the horn real quick, Taryn? Yeah, so in terms of our college football scores happening right now via the ESPN Sports Center app, if it wants to load, uh-oh. Uh, Indiana and Michigan are tied at 10-10. Tennessee is declawing LSU 20-10. to And, oh, no. Mississippi State is taking Arkansas to the Butcher, 21-3. to Florida leads Missouri 10-7. Texas is up on Oklahoma, 21-0. Purdue leads Maryland, 17-10. Louisville and Virginia are tied 10-10. East Michigan leads West Michigan, 21-17. And Buffalo, the Bulls, lead 17-0 over Bowling Green. That's pretty much all of the matchups going on right here and then. We still have some up-and-coming matchups that will be happening soon as we have Akron and Ohio, Georgia Southern and Georgia State. And then soon we'll have South Florida and Cincinnati. But that's pretty much it for all of the single-A football games right there. Kind of surprised to see Michigan having a little trouble with Indiana. I think it's quite – that's something everyone needs to keep their eye on just because the Big Ten can be quite the spiked cocktail, if you ask me. So – Overall, I think it's looking really good in the Big Ten, and I feel the Big Ten West is kind of the more competitive as opposed to the Big Ten East or vice versa. So I'm excited for it, and I really hope we can get like some really good competitive matchups later on as we basically have the latter matchups coming later in the day. So then overall, because if Indiana were to win against Michigan, I think Michigan would basically, it would basically be quite the interesting scenario going into the college football playoff, just because now would USC be deserving of it? Perhaps. And Michigan is driving in on Indiana as they're on, they have the ball in the Indiana 42 I'm surprised Ellis, Tennessee is doing really well. That is going to be a dark horse team right there, man. Like Tennessee is going to doing really well. TCU leads Kansas ten to three as halftime vastly approaches. I think we're in for a crazy college football season, ladies and gentlemen. And I could not be more happy about it. And and man. I still can't believe Michigan and Indiana are tied. Like, if Michigan has to go down to the wire with Indiana, this kind of makes me question on if they'll actually be legit for the college football playoff. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, overall, I think that the college football – I think all in terms of FBS college football, it's going to be really fun, and I'm excited for it. And I'm sure Larry B is as well. And continuing on with the college football side of things, I just think it's another matchup to keep an eye on is Texas versus Oklahoma. What happened with Oklahoma? I really think Oklahoma has taken a major step back after they basically, after they were ranked so high. And this makes me think that they're fool's gold. I could not believe that they were unable to, like defend their really high ranking. I think that Oklahoma has been the biggest disappointment of all the college football teams as of right now. But overall, I think it is something to keep an eye on in terms of the Big 12. It's basically the uh, it's basically Oklahoma State and uh, what's their faces? Oklahoma State and Baylor's conference to lose. Unless Kansas gets hot, but We'll see what happens. So that is pretty much that for the Big 12. Once again, I'm just so baffled on what happened with Oklahoma. I don't understand how they lost. And I really think that 
this could be something interesting to watch for in the Big 12. I think the Big 12 could be a little underrated. I Everyone says the Pac-12 is underrated just because they get no love. But I think that the Big 12 is just as is just as underrated. So we'll see what happens going forward. And I really am excited for the Pac-12 games right here and then. The UCLA game is where everyone's eyes are going to be on in terms of Pac-12 games. UCLA, this is their chance to prove themselves. I had Utah winning 28-20, but for me, I think it's going to be quite – it's going to be an interesting game just because Utah – always has gotten the better of UCLA, but I think this UCLA team might be different. I think this is a team that is going to be so much better prepared. Chip Kelly has them running in the correct direction, and I really think that they could be on the verge of something special, and heaven knows, this UCLA-USC rivalry that's going to be happening on the second to last week of the regular season is going to be something really big. So definitely keep an eye on that. If it's not going to be UCLA versus USC being big time, I think it's going to be next week's match between USC and Utah. But USC has to get through Washington State. Overall, I think all these college single-A football matchups are really good to watch. I really thought that these matchups are going to be super incredible. And I really want to see the ladder matchups happening right now. Uh, give me our little matchups right here, please. Please. I am chomping at the bit here, chomping at the bit out of anticipation, not out of fear. So Michigan's about is po- possibly about to score here. They have the ball on the Indiana seven first and goal LSU trying to get some sort of traction offensively. TCU nearing midfield as the second quarter is about to end. Mississippi State, the Bulldogs, still taking Arkansas to the shed, 21-3. Florida and Missouri got a good battle going on here. I just, Purdue still leads Maryland. Louisville and Virginia are tied. Buffalo, they're looking really good. The Buffalo Bulls, I really think that they have the potential to possibly win the MAC. I always love me some action. We'll see how they do come the later matches uh, or the later games of the MAC. I really think that the MAC could be quite something underrated. So overall, we'll see what happens, and I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the MAC. I think it's one of the more underrated conferences. And then going to the ACC, Larry B. talks about how Pitt wanted their quarterback back, Kenny Pickett, but I think someone else they want back is Jordan Addison. I just don't think Pitt is is anything like – and they don't have the same offense without Jordan Addison as he is just killing it at USC. And I I feel – I feel Pitt – their their run of the ACC championship was great and all, but I think they're kind of going to come crashing back to reality. But it's all good for Pitt. This makes me think that Clemson is going to get back to their rise of power just because it's kind of the circle of life. One team sometimes has their dominance and then another, and that same team basically falls down and then they'll eventually rise again. Like that's just the circle of life in terms of college football, but I like it. I like it. Hey, Larry. So do I, Darren. And thank you very much, Darren. Good stuff there. Sorry guys. I had to take a uh, step away really, really, really fast. And, uh, yeah, really, really, really great stuff as per usual. Taryn, my goodness. The man carries a show by himself easily, right? (laughs) That's just how he does it. So, with that said, you guys, great stuff. Taryn, we are going to sprint, of course, through the rest of today's show. I know we spent a lot of time today on all those other ones. But really quick, Taryn, uh, man, I mean, craziness there. Triple C, double A action. Uh, going on over to the NJCAA, of course. We, uh, like I said, Triple CAA action, not a lot this week, sorry. Uh, kind of cool, kind of cool, right, that we don't have so much to get into with them. More of like a bi week kind of week for these guys. So, solid stuff there. Now we're going to go ahead and just fly right on in to the, whoopsies, sorry about that, Taryn. I'm over here jacking up your screen. Uh, Got got Taryn over here on Zoom, and I'm over here messing up the screen now. So my my bad, Taryn. <laughs> so 
<laughs> Let me go ahead and get on into this uh, here. So really quick. Um, <clears throat> all right. So NJC Double A, man. Great stuff as always. And lots and lots of great football coming our way in this uh, really just last week. I mean, overall, <clears throat> nothing too, super, super crazy. Our, I don't know if the defending champs played yet last week, but I do know there are some solid games uh, that I would like to. Iowa Western now 5-0 and as they defeated Independence 17-8. to Big ups to them. And <clears throat> I believe, yes, 5-0 and Hutchinson defeated Butler 27-19. to So those are really just the big, big ones from last week, Taryn, uh, that I thought were pretty darn big. And then, of course, moving into this week, like I said, we're not going to, Spend two much time. I'm just going to fly through some stuff, man. So coming up today, got a homecoming game. Iowa Central taking on Coffeyville, Independence and Garden City. Very big game there, of course. I believe those teams are in Kansas. Uh, Snow in Iowa Western. That should be another good one. Dog City and Hutchinson. So lots and lots of great stuff going on here today. And we have a couple games tomorrow, it looks like. Oh, actually, no, we don't. Well, what Minnesota West versus Dakota State University JV. There's apparently... There's JV teams. So, um, with that said, Taryn, any thoughts or comments on the NJCAA, or are we going to streamline right over to the D3? Okay, I'm just going to say this, and I'm just going to make this quick. Why is Butler crushing McDougal Technical Institute 56 nothing after two quarters? Like, please call off the dogs. I don't want to see any more of this beating up on the other team. Like, Please, <laughs> I'm. I'm. I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry, but it's just fifty-six nothing after two quarters. End the game, please. I remember one time that we had someone. I think it was Marion that led, like that won like ninety some to nothing. And then I remember a follower or one of the per people, the Marion fans, said that they eventually had to punt the ball uh, on first down just to give the other team a chance. Anyway, and that's absolutely get crazy, back right, Taryn? Like, what? that's just insane to think, right? Like, that's that's that kind of football, man. Those guys just trying to run that score up. You can mean craziness, right? But um, moving on now into a little bit of Division Three, Taryn. We have here from last week. It's top twenty-five stuff here uh, from last week. What do we have? Let's take a look. Looks like nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, Delaware, number fifteen, Delaware Valley took ahead, took um, took out Stevenson twenty six to seven. <clears throat> Pretty solid game there. Uh, not that I've seen any upsets. Number number two, Mount Union just once went, went ahead and did their thing, <laughs> forty five to zero over Ohio Northern, as we all think, you know, as we all expected there. Um, your sinus, I believe, your sinus. Uh, gave number twenty one Saskatchewan Hana, I believe, or Saskahana. I don't know. Play, uh, I really don't know how you pronounce that, but they had a pretty good game there, seventeen to twelve. Taryn, there's one of your games right there. Number twenty four Central ran up the score, fifty eight to zero versus Nebraska Westland. My goodness, and yeah, some good games. Number eleven Bethel had a close one here with Gustavus uh, Adolphus 30 to 27 there and the Johnnies hey number uh 6 St. John's was tested by Concordia Moorhead 35 to 28 but St. John's would prevail and then of course a nice little battle here close call for number 3 Wisconsin Whitewater as they will defeat number 9 uh Lacrosse of course UW Lacrosse 34 to 31 in a solid football game uh so overall great stuff mary harden baylor as per usual <clears throat> knocking off everybody they face almost except for whitewater a couple weeks ago uh but we have here uh number 38 oh sorry no sorry they defeated them 38 uh defeated austin 38 to 7 so mary harden baylor just doing their thing and yeah so great stuff here all across the board number one uh, North Central will take out Wheaton, both Illinois teams here. Number 14, Wheaton, 33-20, to 20, and just some good stuff from last week. So we'll we get ready for this week. Taryn, any thoughts on those games from last week? Uh-oh, we might have lost Taryn again. Uh-oh, let's see. What do we got? Oh, oh I'm okay. back. Um, for Division Three. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um. The, well, for starters, I, I'm liking all these matchups right now. 
I, am I reading this correctly? If, if I'm reading this correctly off of D3Sports.com, I'm seeing a team going into overtime. Concordia of Wisconsin and Eureka are in overtime. And it says four, but I hope that's not four overtimes. Because heaven forbid, that'd be crazy. That sounds like fun to me, there. That uh, that that would be crazy, but that's your type of game, though. Well, well, it other is true. Than that, I'm loving the D three uh, Division three games. Well, Taryn, it looks like this week we don't got a lot of teams. The top twenty five teams, look, they're on a they're on a some some of them are on a break. I see, I'm just kidding. But Mount Union will take on Head uh, Hadelberg today. Uh, Mount, uh, sorry, Mary Hard Mary Harden Baylor looks like they'll be going to battle with East Texas Baptist. So some good games there. Number one. North Central taking on Carroll. So, good football games today going on. Wisconsin Whitewater taking in Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin EU Claire, I believe. And Linfield and Whitworth. Ooh, an Oregon and Oregon and uh, Washington State game going on there. So, it should be some good stuff. So, anyway, with that said, Taryn, let's go ahead and roll on now over to some D2 football. And talk about some stuff from last week of course i mean just always great stuff in division two great stuff as always in all football all college football man you gotta love it right so let's take a look here from last week on the first <clears throat> uh ferris state number one ferris state knocking off finley 38 to 7 i mean once again dominant stuff here notre dame looks pretty solid number 22 notre dame defeating charleston 49 to 24 uh, let's see. We had an upset. Carson Newman defeating number 13, Newberry, 24 to 14. So overall, just some crazy games last week. But some, some once again, out of the, none of the out of the ordinary. Uh, Virginia Union just stomps out St. Augustine's 69 to 0. My gosh. Number 20, Virginia Union. After they knocked off Valdosta State, they're just on the warpath, man. How about that? Last week, upset alert, Sioux Falls. Number 25, Sioux Falls will defeat Augustana. Number 9, Augustana. 31 to 24. Bowie State redeems themselves, defeating Livingstone <clears throat> 53 to 7 last week. So they started off the season kind of crappy. Now they're going a little bit a little bit. IUP defeats number 12, Slippery Rock, 20 to 12. Certainly a good game there. Uh good upset. You always gotta love a great upset, right? And let's take a quick look here and see what number one was doing last week. I'm pretty sure some Number one things. Oh, look at that. Valdosta State. Wow. Delta State just absolutely blew this one open. Defeating number 16, Valdosta State. Former champs there from a few years back. 70 to 31. Also, number two, Grand Valley. Defeating number 18, Saginaw State, 29 to 7. So, yeah, Taryn, there was some, some good stuff last week. And my goodness, how about that? So, yeah, any uh, thoughts on those games from last week in D2? So I did see one of the upsets. This was one of the upsets that I saw was the number 13 team going down, and that was Newberry losing to Carson Newman 24-14. to I was very astounded by that. I'm like, wow. And that's quite a big upset. But home teams have a lot to play for because they play for their pride and they play for their fans. I think it's a huge win having won that one last week. And – Hats off to uh, uh -oh. to the opponent of Newberry. I really thought – I don't really think I predicted that one. I don't think anyone predicted. Carson Newman is the real deal, and hats off to them. Tough luck for Newberry, but some will come up tomorrow. Agreed, good sir. Agreed. Well, I'll tell you right now, tonight we got a, or today we got a good one going up there. And my goodness, number one, Ferris, Ferris State versus number 25, Saginaw Valley. Saginaw Valley knocked off Bowie. They're looking good, man, but can they compete with that tough Ferris State Bulldogs team? We shall see. That's coming up today. Grand Valley right now, number two, Grand Valley just knocking off American National 35 to 3 right now. I think they're at the half, it looks like, according to D2Football.com. Virginia Union currently up 21 to 0 over over uh, Elizabeth City. They're currently number 21 and like I said Virginia Union man, they're climbing the ladder. I I am impressed with this team. They have really done a lot this year. So we shall see how they fare. Bowie State and Virginia State getting ready to go head to head today as well. Uh so yeah, we well, some good football coming up here today in Division 2. <clears throat> so 
Looks like one more ranked team. We have uh, Northwestern or Northwest Missouri, number 10, taking on number 6, Pittsburgh State. If I'm not mistaken, I think Pittsburgh State is in Kansas. Not in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I'm almost positive, um, I think. Uh, but, yeah, good stuff there. And a game that I love a lot. West Florida, you know, Taryn, I'm very high on number on uh, West Florida, the Argos, man. Great team. They're taking on West Georgia today. West, West, West Florida, currently number 11. West Georgia, currently number 16. Should be a solid, solid battle there. And those are my games for Division Two. Taryn, what you got? Well, for starters, Grand Valley is really letting American International have it. They're the, there's a reason why they're the number two team in the nation for a reason. California is up on IUP, which quite, quite astounding. Shepard, there's no surprise. They're up on Lock Haven. Virginia Union doing well. Ashland just trouncing Walsh. I, I really want some of these upsets happening. Notre Dame is up 3 nothing in the first quarter. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm really hoping we get some chaos here. Uh, but hey, North Greenville up seven nothing on Delta State, and that would be a surprise, right? Too. I mean, great stuff, man. I'm telling you, and you gotta love it. I mean, once again, division division two football, just all the, all the divisions deserve to be definitely deserve to be uh, talked about, and glad we can talk about it here on I Sports Radio. So currently, right now, Taryn. We have some NAIA at the moment happening. I know it's happening, but unfortunately my, you know, every single time I try to find it, it's just not working out for me. Uh, but I do know there are some solid games going on here today. And uh, as always, solid football in the NAIA. I love when they cross-conference. Seriously, it's one of my favorite things when they go cross-conference. They play, or sorry, cross, like they play each other. Uh, the, the NCAA and NAIA, some of my favorite football because it's just, you know, you see a different sanctioning body. You know, the, N, the NAIA, some guys believe it's just much better. Some people believe it's just better to go into there instead of going to the NCAA. You know, you can't blame them. The sanctions, all this crap. The NAIA says sometimes, actually a lot of the time, seems like the better product. I mean, I, I you can't hate. So, <clears throat> currently looking at the NAIA, by the way, found the scores finally. But, Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's, uh, let's take a look and get all this thing going on here. So from last week, Taryn, looks like here, man, we had some thumpers going on. We're right off the bat. Siena Heights knocks off St. Francis 13-10. to Man, what a solid game that must have been. I think that's a ranked game there. Marion defeating Taylor 67-7. to Man, talk about... Because, once again, one of Taryn's famous run-up-the-score games there. Uh, beat down. <clears throat> then, of course, we had your Morningside current number one. Knock it off Midlands, 47-12. to 12. And moving forward, what do we have? Who do we have? Let's take a look. Moving forward, Southern Oregon defeating Eastern Oregon, 42-14. to 14. I didn't know there was an Eastern Oregon, but pretty cool to know that now um i've always thought of oregon being like that place where it's literally just all western and the east is just like this big like barren land i'm just kidding uh but anyway so good stuff there from last week and well darren let's go ahead and get on into this week of the naia as we have here st francis indiana taking on madonna right now 21 to 0 st francis leads also, Sienna Heights leading Concordia, Michigan, 6-0. Currently, Reinhardt also leading Kentucky Christian, 26-7. And Kaiser leading St. Thomas, 24. Oh, no, St. Thomas leading Kaiser, 24-17. to Moving on in today's game, sorry. We have, um, let's see, where were we? Where are our higher-ranked teams? Westland, Marion taking on Indiana Westland. Sagu taking on Texas Westland, of course. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, yeah, Taryn, unless I'm not seeing something, I think Morningside, the current number one team in the country in the NAIA, actually has a bye week. So, hey, unless I'm not seeing something, Taryn, but it looks like they're not going into battle today. Kind of nice to rest up their guys, uh, unless they played last night and they did not. So, yeah, Taryn, so what do you think about the NAIA this week? I think Eastern Oregon at Rocky Mountain should be an underrated matchup. Carroll at Montana State Northern should also be somewhat good. And Hastings at Morningside. I don't know how good Hastings is, but I know Morningside is 
They're really looking more legit. Than that's so, what that's the game I was looking for, Terrence. Sorry to cut you off. That was the team that I was looking for. Morningside taking on Hastings today. Yes. Yes, I'm looking forward to that one as well. And we got a lot of good NAI games going on, and I can't wait for them. Well, we Even though we've got how... some going on right now. Sorry. Yeah, some good stuff going on at the moment. So let's take a look and see how they fare. But <clears throat> moving back, of course, Darren, into the single A. Well, Taryn, I mean, double A right now looking. I'm sorry, into double A. We'll move into some double A. And then ended off with a little bit of single A talk. But, man, there has been some great football in the double A this year. And, uh, well... I have all but given up on my ESPN Score Center app today because that thing is just giving me fits. Taryn, is it giving you problems like it's giving me problems or no? Uh, kind of is. I think it has been. It could be because of the lag on my phone just because I've got Zoom happening right now. But uh, uh, darn technology these days. Right. You gotta yeah, love it's just it. getting tough to load. All right. So anyway, Darren, I finally got it working on my side over here. So let's take a quick look at, uh, yeah, finally, right? Let's take a quick look here at some games from last week in double A, if it wants to pop up. But I know for a fact we had, uh, let me see here. Let's take a look. All right. So last week we had here, uh, where were they? So some Ivy League matchups, of course, Princeton taking out Columbia 24 to 6. Uh, how about this one, man? North Dakota, the Fighting Hawks defeating Missouri State, forty-eight to thirty-one. Holy Cross getting it done over Harvard, thirty to twenty-one as well. Solid game there. North Dakota State doing what North Dakota State does. However, Taryn, it was a closer game than North Dakota State would like. North Dakota State only winning twenty-seven to fourteen over Youngstown State. Youngstown State, of course, a very good school. They were the champions a couple years back. Uh, but yeah, South Dakota State taking care of Western Illinois, thirty-four to ten last week. <clears throat> Another solid game <clears throat> there. And uh, moving forward, Gardner Webb fought Marshall very well, twenty-eight to seven. Marshall wins that win, but hats off to Gardner Webb in a good battle there. Portland State, the Pilots go ahead with the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona, thirty-five to twenty-seven. Though Portland State prevails at home. Talk about a good football game there. And then moving on to our side of the country, Taryn. How about that? Well, I mean, well, that's our, that is our side of the country, too. But moving into uh, our state that is in California, we had a couple good ones here, Taryn. Stetson and San Diego canceled. Not sure why. I'm not sure if you knew that. Uh, Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian. Well, that says a lot. That's Wow, hopefully that, that sucks. Hopefully that gets cleared up. Montana's – oh, sorry, uh – Sacramento State knocking off Cal Poly, forty-nine to twenty-one. There, man, the Hornets took it to, took it to the to the Broncos or the, oh, sorry to the Mustangs. And then, of course, Montana State knocking off UC Davis, forty-one to twenty-four. Montana State looking like they want to head back to that championship uh, in Frisco this year. So, Taryn, how about some of those games from last week? Yeah, we had quite a good number of of pot of good matchups and i'm i'm excited for this week's matchup i will say this about san diego if they're not gonna reschedule the stetson matchup could they possibly like schedule another matchup against a team that kind of had their game canceled it's a little food for thought thing but i don't think uh san diego is gonna make too big of a deal of about it but this week they have drake if they don't win that one then it's the most San Diego way for them to lose. Sadly, but truly. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on into some today's games, Darren. We got Yale leading Dartmouth 10 to 7 right now at the half. A uh, little Ivy League school battle there. Uh, Jackson State 4 0, prime time. Of course, Coach Prime leading the Chargers there. They're getting ready to take on Alabama State, who's at 2 and 3. Oh, they're at 3 and 2 coming up. Uh, we also have here, let's see, what else do we have? North Dakota taking on Youngstown State. Should be another good game. Well, should be a great game there. So, yeah, and North Colorado, Colorado and Sacramento State also there. Weber State, Eastern Washington, Tarleton, and Southern Utah. I just love seeing how these schools jump up. Tarleton, of course, we were just talking about them as a D2 last year. Now they're up in Division One, AA. Love it. So, uh, yeah, and Cal Poly, Northern Arizona, NAU should be another good one here. So, Taryn, uh, any games looking forward to today? The Cal Poly NAU matchup is going to be interesting. I feel the Mustangs could, or yeah, the Mustangs could win, but those Jacks are pretty good. I think NAU might have the edge just because I think they face some stiffer competition. 
Agreed, Taryn. Well, we finally reached the FCS, I was the FBS yet again. We talked about this some earlier, earlier on in the show. And well, here we are today, getting ready to continue. Man, Tennessee currently leading uh, Louisiana uh, State. Man, LSU twenty three to seven. LSU, man, because I know they were ready, but as I talked about it, Seth Eves, of course, of USRN, talking to Mr. Arthur Parsons of IE Sports Radio in our chat room early this morning, said those the, the, those are both their teams there, and Arthur saying, you know, he doesn't feel that LSU is up to par, but it should be a good game, and well, it's something like a good game, but uh, Tennessee once again leads that one. I know Seth is happy. Number seventeen TCU leads number nineteen Kansas right now ten to three good defensive battle. The Red River Showdown is just wopsided. Texas taking it to Oklahoma. I don't know what's going on with the Sooners, man, but they're just falling apart. Uh, Texas though leading twenty eight to zero at the half. Also, East Michigan leading over West Michigan, uh, Western Michigan, thirty five to seven right now at the half as well. And number four, number four, Michigan, and we know our boy who was just on right before us, man, Mister Aaron X. We know he's a happy guy because this Indiana Hoosiers are fighting right now with number four Michigan as it's ten to ten, getting close to the half. So, anyway, Taryn, we talked about USC Washington earlier. We talked about some other good games, but we have some, some ones coming up today. Let's go ahead and get on into them, Taryn. Number eleven. These will be. Uh, these will be, uh, you know, snippet-sized comments here uh, towards the end of the show. But, Taryn, quick thoughts, man. 11, number 11, Utah, number 18, UCLA. What you got? Who you got? This is Utah's – Utah and UCLA's biggest test of the season. I really think that Utah, having taken their lumps early, will be able to take down UCLA. But don't count the Bruins. I think UCLA is vastly underrated, and I think they are – about to be on everyone's radar. And I said this earlier that if UCLA wins and USC wins, then it's probably going to be USC and UCLA for a possible spot in the Pac-12 championship. But if Utah wins and USC wins, then it could be USC and Utah for a possible spot in the Pac-12 championship. So I kind of have to lean toward Utah on this one. But again, don't be surprised if UCLA wins. Heck, I might have probably jinxed Utah. So sorry, you fans. <laughs> Good stuff there, Darren. We already talked about number 12, Oregon and Arizona going head to head today. But, well, actually, no, we haven't talked about that one yet, but we'll get into that coming up later. Uh, the the one I really want to address right now, man, this is this this is going to be a great one. In prime time, same time as Saturday Night Football, man, but number 16, BYU and Notre Dame. If Notre Dame's ever going to write the ship, it's today. And BYU, well, they're just rolling along at 4 and 1, the number 16 in the country. Who you got, Darren, and why? Uh, this one's tricky. Is it at BYU or at Notre Dame? It's in South Bend. Hmm. Man, I really want... I'm going to take BYU just to be safe. It, I, I just don't know what to expect from Notre Dame nowadays. I feel that... I feel BYU showed me that they are vulnerable when they played Oregon. But I think... I think they should be able to handle Notre Dame. It's the battle of two independent schools. Well, for BYU's case, they'll soon be joining the Big 12. Should be a good game there. I'm going to go BYU as well, but man, Notre Dame needs to pick it up. Also tonight, we got some uh, Pac-12 after dark. Number 12, Oregon and Arizona. Also, Oregon State and Stanford going head-to-head. Also, another good one in there, Taryn. Florida State and number 14, NC State. Our very own Mike Pat got his undergrad at Florida State and his master's at NC State. Kind of funny that his two teams are going head-to-head today. Any thoughts on any of those games today? We got some ACC after dark too, Taryn. So how about that? Any thoughts on those games? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Say that again. I'm sorry. You're good, Darren. So, uh, yeah, uh, NC State, Florida State. Who you got? I got to go with NC State. I still do the safest choice. I feel NC State is proving a whole lot more. Florida State, I feel, has improved. But I just think NC State, they have a lot to play for. And this could be their year where they could win the ACC. Who knows what Clemson has, but I think NC State has a lot to play for, and they're all about the hype. Don't count out Florida State, though. Agreed, Darren. Also, some uh, Pac-12 after dark. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna go with NC State in that game. Uh, number twelve, Oregon versus Arizona, and then number, and then Oregon State versus Stanford. I'm going Oregon all day in both of these games, Darren. Who you got? Yeah, I gotta go Oregon. There's no doubt in my mind. 
Oregon's – no offense to Arizona. They're improved. Like, Tateroa McMillan has been phenomenal as a receiver, and he's only a freshman. But this Oregon team is the real deal. So give me the Ducks. And, of course, Oregon State, as I mentioned, Oregon, Oregon State versus Stanford tonight. I'm taking Oregon State. Yeah, Oregon State looks like the safer choice. I feel Oregon State had a bit of a hiccup last week when they played Utah, but Utah is good, so I can't fault them too much. But we'll see what happens this week. I got Oregon State. We'll see what their quarterback uh, little question could be, but give me the Beavers. Same here, Taryn. And then last but not least, the game of the day, of course, the game of the week, Sunday night, uh, Saturday night football on ABC. Number five, Clemson comes in 5-0, and taking on the 2-3 and three Boston College Eagles. Clemson is favored by 20 and a half points. Taryn, <laughs> I think it's a safe choice to take, to take uh, DJ Uyunglele and his Clemson Tigers, correct? Yeah, I don't understand why this was match of the, the uh, match of the day. Give yeah. me... Clemson by quite a bit. Yeah, there's better. I think BYU and Notre Dame would have been better for this. <laughs> it's funny because I think aren't they playing like on NBC? Because yeah. I think Notre Dame has like a contract with NBC and whatnot. So. I think so. I think that's why. Oh, I guess I guess they just call it that. But yeah, I man, lots of great games come up today, and yeah, I'm definitely taking uh, taking Clemson here in this one as well. So, Taryn, any last thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, any of that good stuff before we're out of here for today, man? So I actually uh, saw something in terms of high school football. Uh, and oh my goodness, Andale of Kansas crushed Nickerson of Kansas, one hundred eight to zero. <laughs> Why? I don't under. I don't know. And Andale did not last week's win uh, over Nickerson marked their forty third straight game. Can they please play modern day or Bosco or please fly down to California and please play some of our stiffer competition? We'll feed you in and out. But please, why are we seeing 100 plus point victories? Like, please stop. Who is that again, Darren? Andale of Kansas. This is, was all, all the way in the state of Kansas. Andale beat Nickerson 108 to nothing. Wow. And how many – you had to repeat all that for me. They've 43 in a row. Today? They've won 43 matches in a row. Taryn, the, yeah, c- c- come play our guys. Hey, I mean, who knows? You might win. I'm just saying. I mean, you guys are – man, that's crazy. I, wow, 108. My gosh, that's crazy. I don't, well, hey, we'll definitely, uh, definitely like to host better talent. So, hey, if they got it, man. That's – wow. That's – wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, well – Definitely a lot of talent around the country. Let's see if they fly around and uh, take them on. So with that said, Taryn, my gosh, it has been fun. But you know it's time to cue that music because we're out of here. Oh, man, what a good show. What a good show, man. Taryn, talk to us, brother. Where can all these diehard college ball fans find you? Anything to leave us with this day? You can find me on Twitter at Taryn Rodriguez1. That's E-T-R-A-N. Then Rodriguez, then the number one. Alright, you can find me more Larry B. at Well, Instagram, everywhere, you guys, social media, at iSports Radio. Uh, our Patreon supporters are Peter the Gate, Marcus Lister, Adonis Network is through an anonymous, and that's it. Uh, Bay Area Racing Carol. Well, hey, awesome stuff, and we thank you all so very much for showing us love and help supporting us here. Um, keeping the lights on and uh, helping us pay the bills, so we definitely appreciate you all. And, and show us some love. Tune in each and every week. We certainly appreciate you all. And uh, always great stuff here. Well, Darren, lots of great college football, high school football coming your way. Number one in modern day. Well, we know the number one next. Looking strong. <laughs> we will see you in the modern day. We will come off show again. As I said, I know we will. It's a great day of college football. Make sure to enjoy it. Friends, family, love, enjoy it. Lots of great 
college football quarterback in the Miller Lawson. Of course, the Miller Lawson in the NFL. Three and out from the early this week. Three and out from the early this week. Maybe for this week, we're going to win the next week. But what do I want to say? So, with that said, y'all have always said, shout out to the Miller Lawson. Give that one up in the spot for the first time. All right. Thank you all so very much. Big shout out to so we'll be on this stuff a lot, okay? Uh, hey, lots coming your way, y'all here at IH Sports Radio. Keep it tuned. We will see you, of course, coming up next week for this channel video for me, your boy Larry B. Signing off. We'll see you all next week. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless.